Okay. Great to see everyone again. Seems like a long time ago, but it was actually just a few days ago. Um, hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, looking forward to uh, our continued discussion um, around the repurposing of facilities. And I will start um, with roll call. Brandy Salcido. I'll come back. Araceli Ortiz. Oh, I'm here. Oh, Brandy. Here. Okay. Sorry, you were letting me unmute. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Araceli Ortiz. Here. Alberto Torres. Here. Jocelyn Merce. Here. Brenda Sendejas. Here. Edgar Gudiel. We'll come back. Maria Martinez. Here. Ray Turner. Here. And Natalie Ball. Here. Excellent. Thank you. Everybody's present. Uh, um, I didn't hear Mr. Edgar Gudiel. Um, we do have quorum um, present here. So next item is public comments. Just to remind everybody, if a speaker wishes to address the committee on any on an item on the agenda, time will be provided for public comment before or during the consideration of that item. Public comments shall be limited to two minutes, depending on how long the discussions are going, we may adjust that if needed. Um, next item is the review and approval of agenda, order of agenda. I move to approve the order of the agenda. Okay, we'll just take a general consensus. If, if everybody's okay, if I could get a thumbs up, we're good. Awesome. Okay, Ms. Sendejas, are you good with it? All right. Okay. Next item, um, supporting materials. I should, as I shared with you, this is just where everything is housed as we develop this agenda. Um, next item is the approval of minutes. We did email those to you. Um, if there's something that you'd like to clarify there, like to add, um, and then I did not get the minutes. Okay. I will send them. Do you have Mr. Turner's email, Patricia? I think last time we had a, weren't we missing a number or something on the last time? Let yes, me. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's. You said it was Ray with a J. Ray, Ray J. J. Turner, which yes. I, which I have. So let me just send it again. Was attached to the invite because I got the invite. Oh, huh. yeah, but it should I, get. Um, I don't know if it was in the same email. We sent a couple of different ones. Let me forward it to you just in case. Ray. Okay. I forwarded. You might get two, so you might get Patricia's and you might get mine, Ray. Um, okay. They're at the bottom. They're attached to the presentation as well as as well as the minutes are there. Okay. Um, Sorry, Renee. Yes. Are you sitting in? 
Tom, I'm sitting in. And you can't. Okay, I can't Mr. seem to unmute myself, or okay. you're not letting me unmute. <laughs> for Mr. Gudiel, no. okay, we'll ask them to allow you to unmute yourself. So yeah. Dan Wu is 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 uh, sitting in for Mr. Edgar Gudiel. Thank you. Thank you. And Patricia, if you have the minutes, um, if you have uh, Tom's uh, email, if you could forward to him the minutes as well. Okay. Actually, I do have a copy on my other phone. I can okay. chime in. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. As you guys are looking through the minutes, um, any comments, any questions regarding the minutes? I don't know if there was anything. Jocelyn, I know that you sent the communication. Anything that we should include in these minutes? We will go back to your, your points of clarification as we after we do the presentation. Okay, but if that's there's fine. anything that we need to include in the minutes, let us know. No, that's fine. Thanks. I move to approve the minutes. I Can I a get a second? Oops, sorry. I had a question real quick on the minutes. I didn't see anywhere where I requested for a metric to be made. Okay. Or work on one. I didn't I was looking for it. I just I didn't okay. see it. Thank you for that. Can I get a second and we can still continue discussing it or commenting on it? I second. Thank you, Brandy. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So if we're ready to vote on the minutes, I will do a roll call. I will call your name. Brandy Salcido? Yes. Araceli Ortiz? Alberto Torres? Yes. Jocelyn Merce? Yes. Brenda Sendejas? Yes. Tom Fu? Yes. Maria Martinez? Yes. Ray Turner? Yes. And Natalie Ball? Yes! yes. Good. Okay, that passes. Thank you for that. With that, I will ask Mr. Art Hand um, to share his screen and share some additional information, a summary of some of the things that we captured, and then we could add some further clarification if needed. Um, you also should have received an email just recently uh, from Patricia Tovar, and this has to do with the inters and the intra uh, district transfers, and we'll talk about that as well. Great. Hey, thanks, Renee, and uh, thanks, uh, guys. Uh, good to be uh, back here at our weekly um, 
little soiree. Uh, so as Renee said, uh, we've got a uh, shorter presentation tonight uh, than what we've had in the past. And I'll bring that up on the screen right now. I'm gonna try anyway. Let's see what we got. There we go. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Yep, okay, super. Okay, so uh, as Renee said, um, uh, we took the information that we received at last meeting and uh, tried to package it, uh, at least in a synopsized uh, format, uh, so that everybody could take a look at it and we could continue uh, what was really a good dialogue. I, I got to say that I was very uh, appreciative and impressed uh, last week with the work that the committee did. Uh, we had some good suggestions. There was a lot of good back and forth. Um, and I, I thought that uh, last week's meeting uh, took us in a, a very positive direction. So I want to thank you guys for that. I think that was excellent. I think you did a great job last week. Uh, uh, Ms. Andeja said had uh, talked about uh, the metric uh, for repurposing. Um, this is probably not as structured as she might have anticipated, but what we did, we went back and we took a look at the things that we had talked about last week um, as some of the criteria that you guys might want to be uh, looking at as you um, uh, are considering uh, making recommendations on uh, any given site or sites. Uh, for um, uh, the uh, purpose, the repurposing uh, option. Uh, so we just came up with this short bullet list. I'm sure there are other things that are out there that we certainly could add if you'd like us to. Um, and we can talk about some, those some more tonight uh, during our conversations and discussions. But again, we wanted to provide this to you um, once more just as a point of reference to uh, facilitate uh, the, the continuance again of what was a great dialogue from last week. On that same note, um, we I went back through the notes, my notes, and uh, through the course of our discussion last week, these were generally the sites that we saw that um, had been discussed in some way or shape um, in, in, as a part of the repurposing uh, idea. Uh, some with more um, uh, force, if you will, uh, than others. Uh, Chavez, Lindell, Mathen, uh, Fisher, uh, amongst those. Uh, Ocala and Shepard uh, were mentioned uh, by Mr. Turner. Uh, it's kind of a in the future with, it, with, with an eye towards the future uh, as a possibility uh, for consideration. And San Antonio mentioned only really uh, in, in true passing uh, as a part of a conversation we, were, we had that was talking about um, the um, uh, adjacencies of school sites to charters and the impact that uh, a repurposing of a school that had an adjacency to charters, what, what kind of an impact that might have. San Antonio came up as a part of that discussion and in, in terms of their uh, geographic center in relationship to the charters. And so I put it on here, it wasn't really talked about in the context of, oh, let's consider San Antonio, but because it was mentioned by name, I thought it was important to, uh, to add it to the list for tonight. And then, um, this was something that I, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed going back through the notes, my notes, and pulling out these ideas. These were the things that I heard you guys talk about um, at last week's meeting uh, as potential reuse options. And again, I, I was so impressed with the, um, with the outside the box thinking that some of you had with some of these things and um, uh, thought it was uh, really reflective of the um, good work and uh, the conscientious, conscientious effort <laughs> that you guys are making uh, in trying to put something together for the, that works for the district uh, from a financial standpoint, but also works for our staff and our students and uh, the community in general. So um, you can see here that uh, a, a lot of real breadth and depth of, uh, of options that were presented from health clinics to the construction industry apprentice program training sites, which I got to say, uh, being an, a longtime facilities guy, uh, I really love that one. I thought that was a great use, a great potential use. The nonprofit uh, uh, opportunities, I thought that was another great idea. Senior housing was one that uh, st jumped out to, for me. So uh, again, lots and lots of um, really good thought here and uh, opportunities for us to um, use these as we move farther down the process and get closer to 
making uh, true recommendations to the board. Uh, the next slide, ha, gosh, yeah, seen this one before. We're gonna keep bringing this one back. This is just to bring home again, the idea that, okay, this is our base, our core data that we, we wanna share with you guys so that um, you understand and we all understand uh, the, the magnitude of the problem uh, that we face. And in the same way, same slide we had last week that really graphically illustrates, oops, excuse me, no, <laughs> really graphically illustrates um, what uh, challenges uh, are in front of uh, Alum Rock as we sit here today. And our last slide for tonight, of course, is the calendar, which you guys re uh, voted on and approved uh, at last week's meeting. And we can talk more about that here in the next agenda item where we can um, do a couple things, uh, take a look at first the first community forum and how we want to set that up and uh, what we can expect to deliver to uh, the community and what we could expect for possible outcomes. So with that, I'm gonna stop my presentation right now and, and open it up to questions and uh, concerns or opportunities, options and opportunities, as we like to say around here. Uh, so uh, with that, that's what we'll do. Renee? Yes, um, and I see some hands up. And I think I, I wanted to add a little, a little more clarification and, and we'll add some additional information and um, in here, um, Jocelyn did reach out to us to clarify a couple of points, and I wanted to share it with, share some of that with with the group here um, in terms of some additional information. And let me see, let me pull up my notes real quick here. Um, um, as one thing to clarify, as Fisher site. Um, as Madsen was, was suggested as a possible closure, um, the concept was that Renaissance 2 and Renaissance 1 uh, possibly would be combined. That was part of the suggestion, um, I believe, just to clarify. And Ocala and Shepard, um, it was only mentioned at the end as a possible future, right? Year two or three in, in, in Mr. Turner's um, recommendation, and he can right. clarify some of that um, as well. And as we shared, right, at this point, there were no schools that were off limits. And as we're looking at some of those parameters, some of those specifics that we're looking for in terms of schools, right, the enrollment number, the decline, um, all of those things, right, that we want to look at, um, we definitely did state that, right? Um, but obviously, there are definitely some schools that will stand out more than others. Um, and I'm in terms of what would be appropriate, what 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 is important here. Um, you know, one thing that was pointed out about Lindale um, was the kinder the kinder autistic uh, autism program that's been there for many many years. Um, and that's definitely something that we wanted to highlight and recognize also. And obviously this is something that we need to look at as we, as we identify schools that a lot of them do offer some exceptional programs um, throughout our district. And I will share, uh, there was a question of the inter and intra-district transfer. Um, Jose, or Patricia, if you have that, I sent that out. If you could pull it up um, as far as a data point and share it. Um, if you did send it out, Renee, I did not get it. I just checked. Okay. So I, I don't know if anybody else did, but I know I didn't. I got it. Huh. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll send it out again. But Jose, if you could pull it up here and we'll make sure to get it to you, Jocelyn. Yeah. Do, I need, do I need to stop my share? Please do. It's, it's in the same email. It's on the same email where they sent the facilities for repurpose in minutes. It's in that same email, the intra. It was? It was just sent seven minutes ago, Jocelyn, you're on the- Oh, the second time around, the minutes yeah. were sent? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I'll check again, but yeah, I used we'll to share it with the group and, and, and again, we'll, we'll make that available. 
So if Patricia or Jose, if you guys can share that document. Patricia, do you have it on your uh, screen? Not yet, no. Let me see. Renee, while well, they're, they're pulling that up, can I go back to one of the first bullet points that you gave clarification? Yes, please. That actually, um, and, and that was, and I, I apologize to Mr. Turner that I sent his to the wrong address. So I resent it just a few minutes ago, the email that I sent out earlier. But one of the questions that I still am not clear on, what had to do with uh, closing Matson. Um, it was my understanding, uh, according to Mr. Turner's proposal, that it was the intent was for the students from Renaissance One and Renaissance Two and Matson and Fisher to all operate at the Fisher site. And I wanted to double check that because that didn't seem to be reflected anywhere in the um, okay, I have it. Things that were sent to us this afternoon. You're muted, Renee. And we'll ask Mr. Turner to clarify that for us. I just wanted to make sure that I did share this document and, I, and we did send it to everybody, right? And I just want to explain it in case you guys have any questions. Um, you have the names of the schools on the, on the far left column. Interests, and interests are within the district. And there's the percentage. Interests are outside of the district and there's the percentage. Right, you have the number of interest in interest and as well as the percentage, right? So as you can see, we'll just start at top. Adelante has within the district 230 uh, students request to be there. Um, and, I, and then outside of the district is 137. And that's for the TK through fifth grade. And also before we move on on that, it's my understanding that Adelante won, uh, Lucha, and Renaissance, all their students are intra, inter yeah. or intra district. They start with none. Right. They're, they're not a, they're not a uh, neighborhood school, right? So all their students have to be coming from somewhere yeah. else. Correct. So those shouldn't really even. Right. Be what counting. we need to break down here would be those that are in the neighborhood, right? That are Matson, for example, at Renaissance Matson, or at Renaissance Fisher, right? We don't have that that exact data there, but you no. you do have inters in there, and these are students or percentage of students that are coming outside of the district. And and a good majority of like the Matson students that are considered intra transfers out actually are just going, the ones that are going to Renaissance at Matson. I guess my point is that it's very misleading when you look at- um, The interest, yes. Just the numbers. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. very misleading. Yeah, and we could definitely try to break that further. We just don't have it on the system. This is a report that we run through the system, right? Um, what I can tell you though, is go back to the interest the inters, I'm sorry, the ones that come outside the district, and that gives you a sense of how many students um, these, these schools are attracting from outside of our district that these are students that would normally not come to our school. Yeah, and, and Renee, I was gonna make that same comment, and, and I understand what Jocelyn's saying about the intra-district transfers and how those numbers um, uh, could be um, uh, seen in, in a couple different ways. And I, Renee, I think your uh, idea of uh, having a, in the for the next time we get together or before that, being able to push information out that would talk about um, the student of those intra-district transfer, what we're calling intra-district transfer students, because those schools don't have generated attendance areas, especially for Matson and Fisher, uh, what students would be within those attendance areas. I think that would be good data to have. But the important thing here, most that really comes out and I think works well for us, in our discussions is the fact that you've got good numbers on the inter-district transfers. And we've had a couple of discussions, a couple of comments uh, over these last few weeks about uh, the number of kids that are coming 
to us from outside of our boundaries. And I think it's great now that we've got um, uh, a document here that helps us get our arms around that. Patricia, can you um, scroll have, up? Can you scroll up, Patricia? Thank can you. I ask a quick question with Absolutely. the inter? It, Natalie, um, you know, because I know, like, if 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 uh, teachers or staff, you know, if they bring in their children, that's going to look the numbers for inter. That's going to be different than like other families from outside of our district we don't have staff at work in our school district. Yeah. So is that, is the inter including the uh, Allen Rock staff students that, you know, if their child's going to school in the I district, believe, or is I that only students that aren't? Uh, I believe it would. I have a question. How updated is this? Um, this interest is and interest is this, this from this year or last this is year correct. yes so this is currently right now mm -hmm. okay and then i have um another question um i noticed that the chat is disabled can we enable it like we had it on the first meeting is that a possibility um and it's hard for us to, we're gonna open it up to the public but it is hard for us to try to toggle between the comments and the questions so i'd rather we, we are gonna give people the opportunity to share. This is also recorded. So right now, in order to navigate this um, in an easier way, we, we wanna provide people the opportunity to talk. So we're gonna give them ample time. And so this and is recorded, so we, we can capture that information um, elsewhere. I just wanna make sure that I'm respectful and I don't lose a question. It gets to 40 questions and I'm not able to respond to it or any of us are able to respond to it before it gets to number 40. So okay. that's the then reason I had a, sorry. Yeah. And I had a comment with, um, so I was doing, I guess my homework during this week to kind of see, prioritize and see schools, what to look for. So I was looking at the EMG facility assessment that was done in November 19th. And are we looking at that as well? Like for example, um, I was looking at it and it was Ryan Adelante, Shepard, George, Curtin. I just put the top 10 schools that they had and the cost for sh short-term repairs. And so I compared that to what you guys gave us. And then now I'm gonna compare the interest and the interest with these schools. But are we looking at also like the building components and like the highest safety component buildings for each school? Um, I would, someone told me this week, for example, uh, Joseph George is built in a, there's two faults in that school. So to repurpose or do anything, it will be very difficult to do something in a school like that because of the two faults that fall in, in that school. So. And I know that Colvera, I don't know if Colvera is here, but he did share last time, right? That it's really difficult to assess um, how to prioritize that because you don't know how you would be repurposing it, who you would be repurposing, what would be the terms of the contract and the memorandum of understanding with the individuals. So it's really difficult to say, okay, we th this one has a higher cost in repair. Um, we don't know if that would be built into the, the contract that you would be, um, you know, engaging in with, with the entity. So that's the piece that becomes tricky, but those are things definitely to consider, right, as you, as you look at this, right, as you look at enrollment, as you look at inter-district transfer, as you look at programming, and the list of other things that both you and, and we were able to share with the group um, that, that, that would be important to, to take into consideration. So it's, it's hard to, um, you know, uh, designate one singular thing that, that would put us over the top in terms of what, what, which school, um, I think it's a matter of taking all those pieces into consideration. Um, you know, I can share with you right now, um, if you look at students and in, in inter-district transfers, every student typically generates anywhere from $10,000 to $12,000 um, per year, right? So what that would mean is 10 students would be about $100,000, 12,000 
20 students would be $200,000. And I'm just giving you a, a rough, rough number, a very rough number, right? 30 students, 50 students. I mean, I'm looking at Adelante and you're looking over a million dollars, right? That's generated from students that are coming outside of our district. Yeah, and then another thing that I noticed when I was going through all the the presentations for facilities that they've given the district, for example, Matheson had a water foundation that needed to be replaced. Was that ever replaced or is that still a cost that, I know that cost a lot of money to fix these kind of things. So um, I just had that question for Matheson, was that fixed? And I know that a lot of work was done in this school as well because of the fire and a lot of updates. Mm -hmm. um, and like the Lucha, water, they water. have a central AC water. brand new, right? So I would rather, in my opinion, save schools that have long-term, um, I would say fix that been done, then, you know, repurpose and repurpose the schools that have maybe a lot more expenditure to fix these even short term long terms and looking at the buildings as well and i think i don't know if it's possible to do like a fiscal not a, a forensic you know um on some of the schools that we might consider and and really look in detail maybe put like our top 10 and go into detail with those 10 schools and really focus on pinning down the cost and all these other things we could consider in the metric that's just my opinion Thank you for that. Um, before we go any further, um, I don't know if Mr. Ray Turner, you wanted to add some clarification to the questions that were posed. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Um, so to answer Jocelyn's question, my thought on Renaissance and Fisher and Matson are the Renaissance students at Matson go to the Renaissance Academy at Fisher and the other students at Matheson go to the regular Fisher School, if that's the right way to put it. I guess they're two separate schools on the same site. That's correct. Okay, so the idea was to keep the same kind of students together, minimize the impact to the um, Renaissance Academy students that are moving. Another question was Ocala and Shepherd. Yeah. I, I said in two to three years, we might address that. My thought was we don't want to try and do everything right now because we don't really have time to do a really thorough analysis of all these numbers and how, you know, what will happen to students when we start moving them around and things like that. So I thought it better to do what we need to do now uh, and then take a look at it and see what happened. And that would help in, inform what we have to do in a couple of years. Um, also, I had another, I did have a question with, from, from Art. The financial chart that he chose to put in this week's presentation was the updated admin utility costs. And I thought our target was to uh, optimize the savings in the operational cost area. So I wonder if you could address that. Do I, am I, are we optimizing the right thing? Uh, Ray, we can we'll look at anything and everything that you guys want to take a look at. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't pick that up as a focus for this week's meeting when I went through the notes, my my notes from last week's meeting. Uh, so I didn't include uh, the uh, operational chart. Uh, uh, if you're talking, when we say operational chart, if you're talking like Ms. Endejas, uh, if you're talking about uh, the cost for uh, maintenance and uh, maintenance repair, long-term, short-term uh, major maintenance repair. Um, we didn't include that one. Uh, the chart, unless I picked the wrong chart, hang on, maybe. Uh, well, I can't get back to my, I can't get on my screen. Uh, but um, uh, the chart that I have tonight, hold on, I do have a hard copy, hold on, let me grab it, it is the one that we had, the same one we had last week uh, that um, details that includes the admin and utility costs. So it is the operation, the base operational costs uh, of each of the school sites um, from that perspective. So I thought that's what, I, that's the way I was defining it. If I've missed that guys, I apologize. We can certainly give to you whatever data we can find and give you a, a different variance on this if that's what you'd like. Uh, well, there, uh, we have a chart from 
uh, February 4th. Its title is Educational Operational Cost Review. Um, if I can cl clarify, I believe it's the same chart. It's just been updated with a, with, with a different title, uh, Ray. Um, but it's the same, basically the same information. Yeah, and guys, so I you can't... have the column that has administrative, and, and that's op it, it is the operational cost, right? But I believe it's the same chart. Yeah, and exactly we did the same it, we information. Did, yeah, we did update this chart. Remember, we brought we in the original variant or uh, the original um, uh, iteration of this uh, information. Uh, we had combined uh, Fisher Renaissance One and Mass and Renaissance Two together. Uh, and then uh, we broke, we've now broken those out into uh, their individual line items so that we can have a clearer picture of impacts uh, related specifically to those programs at uh, those schools. Sorry to interrupt. I'm confused. Oh, sorry. What, what chart should we be looking at to add up the numbers in which column to get to the $7 million? The to try it. Oh, the first thing is, as we we've talked about the. In, in re, re, excuse me, uh, Renee. I'll let you jump in as you need to. Yeah. Colbert, if you're on the line, still yeah. jump in. But um, the district's overall goal is seven million. But uh, as I understand it, uh, for the purposes of what we're doing right now, we actually are looking at maybe something to get. If we can get to about half of that, the about three million or so. Uh, we would be um, in um, a positive, uh, be going in a positive direction. And so what we're looking at here, Ray, uh, in this particular uh, spreadsheet would be the column of the 2021 admin utility costs and take a look at those. And as we can knock, as we can, we can use those numbers again, those are just base baseline, very generic um, uh, numbers that are put together for purposes of establishing uh, a viewpoint that the committee can use to start making, uh, to assist in making decisions. So use, we'd be looking at that column right there to try to come up with um, uh, a number figure that would work uh, from a budgeting perspective. Am I, Renee, is that correct? That, that, is, that is correct. I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Colvera, and then I, I, I will, I will ask Maria and Ray, we could come back to you. Um, I, Renee, if I can jump in real fast. Yeah, um, I, I think one, one, one of the aspects that need to be considered here, uh, you know, as we're going, as we're providing information and data uh, related to, save, to savings in terms of, um, you know, savings from admin and also from maintenance costs, um, I think one component that, that we're not clear about at this point is uh, potential revenue enhancement, right? And depending on what we do with the facilities itself, that's that's a component that we need to consider moving forward in terms of how much revenue um, we're able to generate from from repurposing of, of those sites, um, and that's a piece that's unclear right now. We won't know we won't know until we get to that point, um, until you know the the this committee makes a recommendation and the board takes action in terms of what we do with the facilities, then we can determine how much um, revenue potential could receive. So just, just throwing that out there to keep that you know, kind of in our thoughts as we move forward. Thank you. Maria? Yeah, so going back to what Ray had um, proposed with the uh, Fisher campus and having the Matson kids attend that site. Um, you mentioned the Renaissance One and Renaissance Two. Would you foresee them joining together as one Renaissance or allowing them to maintain their um, individuality? And so technically that would be three schools on one campus. Um, knowing Renaissance, I would feel like Combining the two might not be the most optimal solution. Um, so I was just curious to know where, what your thinking was around that. Is that to me, Maria? Yeah. Uh, well, so I don't know the, uh, the academies or the campuses that well. 
um, I only was thinking that you need to combine the classes if you want to get the most savings, I think. Okay. Okay. Because I think one of the pieces we definitely want to keep in mind is if the schools are, you know, um, considered small schools of choice, things like that, we want to maintain the integrity of, of what the, you know, the core principles of the school are. So just keeping that in mind. Thanks. Brandy? I had a quick question about that as well, somewhat about the Fisher Matson. Um, why we were looking to move the Matson kids to Fisher if the utility cost per student was actually higher at Fisher and Renaissance One. I think I may have lost something there because financially I didn't understand why that was the move we were going for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jocelyn? Mine sort of goes along with what's already been asked, but again, clarification on uh, whether or not, I mean, the combination of, of schools, what does that mean as far, because again, the savings that we're looking at is in the administrative costs. And if we're just moving the administration along with the school, we're not saving administrative costs. So again, what what is, and that's just in the in Ray's proposal, in referring to that specific proposal, what was the intent? And maybe, you know, again, maybe he answered it by saying, you know, we haven't thought that far ahead, kind of thing. Um, so we can continue. Yeah. Can continue. If I may add. I think the idea is that if you're eliminating that particular school, you would be eliminating that administrative cost. So therefore, mind. with that in mind, if you were combining the four schools on, or would, it sounds like he has more in mind in his proposal, the Renaissance and then the combination Matson fisher in other words, those two schools combined onto one site. So it would be four schools on the one site with two separate administrators, one for Renaissance, one for Matson or Fisher, correct? I think so. Okay, thank you. Ms. Sendejas? I think another point we have to think of is that is our wish that these schools will merge, but for to retain these kids, we also have to look at the surroundings of the charters that are around there. So we have Ace Rocket Chip, and we also have Kip in that neighborhood area, right? Kip, Kip Hard and Kip Price. So doing this, we're not providing transportation. So these students could be potentially lost because they probably have a neighborhood charter school next to them or closer to them. <laughs> especially if the parents don't drive or they walk to their home school. So I don't know. I don't know how great of an idea this would be to merge all of these into Fisher. Um, I agree with Brandy that Fisher was a, a very, I think it was a short term cost was high as well. I know it's a bigger school compared to the ones that you guys want to merge together, but I just want to consider that there are also charter schools and we are not providing transportation. So just consider that and that's just my opinion. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Alberto, but before that, I just want to add a clarifying point to everyone. Remember, this is a discussion. Uh, Mr. Turner had some suggestions. There's additional suggestions being made by others. This is not a recommendation that's going forward anywhere, okay? We need to come to a, a collective understanding and decision eventually to come together with a uh, recommendation um, that the majority of the group is comfortable with, okay? All right, just to clarify, Mr. Alberto. Thank you. Um, I just wanna make some, uh, some questions uh, to Ms. Maria. Um, in regards to Renaissance, um, wh why is it that we can't 
uh, merge the Renaissance. Um, I'm not familiar with that neighborhood like Mr. Turner. Um, so is, is there a reason why we can't um, merge those, those schools that uh, we should kind of take into consideration for other sites? Um, and, and, and two, um, echoing Ms. Zendejas' concerns about transportation uh, Ray, or art, excuse me, um, in operational cost, is that where I would assume transportation is taken into account when we repurpose a school? Or is that going to be somewhere else in the future? Because uh, I would assume, you know, cause and effect, if a, if a school site is being repurposed, uh, transportation may take a heavier load, um, obviously causing some routes to, um, you know, maybe... Uh, I guess, in large in terms of capacity per bus, do we have the busing to kind of have that, um, you know, take motion? Um, so just those two uh, clarifying points there. Thank you. And, and uh, uh, Alberto, uh, transportation cost, the consideration of transportation costs would indeed be a part of the admin utilities, but uh, I don't believe we have that. At, at, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, do we have transportation other than for special ed. I, I think that uh, we would certainly have to consider that from a special ed perspective if we had program movement because of uh, uh, closures, uh, but that, and that's where that uh, uh, would come uh, and show on the, uh, on the charts. And we would break, when we, as Renee said, once we, can, we get down to a level where uh, we, we've got really some sites that we're looking hard at, you guys are looking really hard and fast at, uh, we'll come back and we can say, okay, now let's let's start digging a little deeper, and we'll and we'll provide information to you that um, uh, will give a better idea of um, the potential outcomes of decisions. And so I think you'll get more that detail will help you answer some of those questions. And just to clarify, um, transportation is only provided for special ed students, and it depends on the programming that's offered at that particular site in terms of students that are bused or some that may be in the neighborhood, um, but those are the only students that we, we provide transportation for. Um, I believe Jocelyn, you were next. So tying in with that and looking at this um, chart that's on the screen right now, um, what I did notice in looking at and going through the demographic study and looking at the transfers in and transfers out and in intra districts, Included in here, like when we, when we um, consolidate classes after school starts and a school is deemed full and those students are moved to another school, I know we don't provide transportation for them, but they are also considered intra-district, correct? So in other words, if school A fills up in fourth grade and closes and sends 20 students over to school B, those kids that go to school B are being considered as intra-district transfers. I, you know what, I would have to ask student services in terms of how they document that piece, right? Because this is- Clarification on that, but in looking at it and looking at the numbers, Mm -hmm. kind of seem like that's been happening, mm -hmm. but not, you know, I don't know for sure, but. Yeah. L let me get clarification on that. Maria. Thank you. Um, so to go back uh, to answer the question that was um, directed at me by um, I believe it was Albert Alberto. Um, so Renaissance one and two are two independent schools because they're small schools of choice. And so the, they were set up in a particular way to, to, mo to have a program run in a particular way. And so just by throwing them together isn't gonna necessarily um, keep the integrity of of the intention of the program in place. So that's why I was curious to know if, if the idea was to put them together or if it was to keep them separate. So um, that, that was just a wondering I had. 
Um, and then another question was, um, I know I missed last week, but I'm wondering if we has, if the committee has set up or have we thought about setting up our uh, criteria um, or a rubric for, for trying to um, finalize some selections? I know that we have a lot of work that's expected to be done. And so I just, I know that we could brainstorm all day and all night, but I think at some point we need to move forward with constructing some criteria that is gonna help make our decision um, if, if this committee is honoring the, um, the position of giving names to the board in the timeline that has been set up for us. Because um, processing the data and and everything that we're doing is really important, but at the same time, um, you know, time is of the essence, I guess. So I was just wondering if any of that had been um, started, even I, because I missed last week. We we did discuss that, Maria, and Art did share in his presentation some general criteria in one of the slides. Um, and we'd be happy to go over that again with the group as we, as we wrap things up. Um, but these are some general considerations that we should be looking at. Um, and this is from some of the feedback that we got from, uh, different, different members of the committee. Okay. Great. 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 Good. Good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'd like to, I could bring my slide back up, but I can't get to it right now. Well, the my, my screen's locked out because, uh, Patricia's got, you know, she's got her screen up. So I could go back, uh, if we could kill this screen, I could go back to my presentation and uh, we could just quickly take a look at the criteria that we had put together. And I think, uh, Maria, that uh, what's in there would, um, um, I think it, it puts us potentially uh, into, gives us a, an opportunity to start with some points of discussion. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, you talk about developing a rubric uh, these are the kinds of things we could use uh, to um, uh, start um, putting that into uh, into play. Yeah, I feel like we're going to need to move, start moving forward. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of be spinning our wheels because there's so many what if scenarios. We kind of right. just need to hone in and focus. Um, so, yeah, those are just my thoughts. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, Natalie, and then Ms. Endejas. I, I wanted a clarification on that last slide. So just, um, does, so Renaissance has two middle schools. So they have one elementary and two middle schools? No. Okay, because, okay, because both of them said middle, there was a Renaissance and it's, it had a middle school by um, both of them. Yeah, Renaissance Middle School at Fisher and Renaissance Middle School at Matson. Yeah, so yeah, so then Renaissance does have, they have two middle schools, but they're just at different locations. Correct. So was, um, so was, did that happen? Because Renaissance one, did it fill up? And so they opened two Renaissance Middle Schools. Sorry, I'm trying to make sense of like, for me, just to wonder, why we one program gets to have two middle schools on separate sites. Yeah. Um, if I can share from my, from my hi historical understanding, uh, Renaissance was founded as a small school of choice and they typically maxed out um, at their school. And because of the success of the program, the concept was um, brought up to replicate the program at Madsen. Renaissance Fisher was the original school and the program was replicated at Renaissance Madsen to offer choice for parents. Okay, so they have one, one elementary school, but, but two middle schools at different sites. No, they don't, have a, they don't have an elementary school. They're both middle schools. Fisher and Renaissance Fisher and Renaissance Madsen are both middle schools. Okay. Uh, and okay, but they they can't be at the same site. Uh, sorry, I'm it's just looking at it. I'm just 
trying to make sense of seeing like one program that has two like two programs within itself so okay thank you yeah. it, it was it was a matter of offering choice and remember these were this was a school that was founded as a small school of choice so they had a cap and because of the popularity of, of the program they felt that it was adequate to open up a second program at Madsen. Okay, so then to like, so then there's two uh, small, uh, two schools of choice for Renaissance that have small numbers, but it creates extra cost. They're, they're, okay. I mean, yeah, if you're running a school, okay. it, it, it's another cost, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, each, each, Natalie, each has a separate administration, administrative component, at least based on the numbers that we saw. And so that's, that's where that's picked up. Yep. Ms. Yeah, I think, sorry, I was just going to say, I think like in looking at, or, you know, like with the suggestion of putting them on sites, it's like, you know, people aren't saying let's, you know, take away the program, but I, you know, I'm hearing comments of, you know, like people saying they shouldn't be on the same campus. So I was just confused. I'm trying to make sense of that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sendejas? Yeah, I think um, just to clarify a little bit, what Natalie was saying was, well, my thing was, it's not that I don't want both schools, it's there's a big cross street story. So to move Renaissance to both Renaissance to Fisher, I think it would be an issue of transportation for a lot of the families. But my question um, was for you, Renee, if there is a possibility that we could get all of this printed in a binder, because I feel like a lot of the people here in the committee don't really know our schools or our facilities where they're at, and it would help a lot to have like, you know, a binder with a map and everything so you can go back and forth. That's how I have it here at home and it helps a lot. And um, just to kind of help everyone make a better decision, I think if we were to have a binder with everything and then every week we can just put in the new information, it would help us and it would be more organized. Um, but I had a suggestion, I don't know what you guys think, um, so I'm looking at Fisher and I'm looking at Ocala and they're both middle schools. Um, is there a possibility? I'm also looking at the cross streets. Ocala is a big cross street, but is there a possibility to merge those two schools? They're middle school, but then I also see we don't have a lot of middle schools and I kind of, my opinion is small schools attract people and from what I've heard and I've seen even when I walk this whole neighborhood a lot of people want small schools uh if we can try to maybe that's just a suggestion Fisher moved to Ocala if that's a possibility and then I'm also seeing Adelante is a school that has a lot of expenses of short-term expenses so if we can move those students, I know that's a small school, but there is not another school. Because that one and Ryan had the most short term expenses. There was 2 million for Ryan and it was Adelante 1 million. I don't know. So for now, I'm just gonna say Fisher and Ocala merge them together. That's just my suggestion. Thank you. Uh, Brenda, Brenda, can I ask a question? Uh, where, which, which campus would go to which campus in your in your model? Are you thinking so, the Ocala kids go to Fisher or Fisher goes to Ocala? Um, I would say Fisher go to Ocala just because if we repurpose Ocala, it's DCPs right next to it, and we don't want to lose those students to that school. So by Fisher, there's really no charter schools right next to there. There's Renaissance and Dorsa around there. So my suggestion would be Fisher going to Ocala. Great, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. I have two comments, one being that obviously there's a benefit for having 
schools with small numbers. I think we would all like that. Um, that just keep it out there. I mean, <laughs> my other comment is probably not going to be a popular one. Um, but I do feel that the decision that we're being asked to make or recommend is one that takes much longer than an hour and a half meeting every week for two months at the max when we're considering, you know, upending, I mean, turning over the lives, many of these students in the community. We don't offer transportation. So wherever they end up is going to be problematic as it is now, we know that. I, I don't feel, I mean, we've had four meetings or five meetings now, and I don't feel any more prepared today than I did in day one to make, a, I, I'm not one that's in favor of moving fast and moving fast ahead into making any decision because we have to, because we were told to. I think that this is a situation worth looking at other ways of saving money. One of them, I mean, and it may not seem like a lot, but if we're talking about combining schools because of administrative costs, maybe we just combine some administrators over various sites that, that have smaller enro uh, enrollment, that have less staff, be and take a longer period of time to make decisions that, that may be irreversible and may end up having a domino effect down the line and that won't be in our favor. They may end up losing more kids than we will even expect to. I mean, I just, I feel that, you know, I know that's not what we were asked to be on this committee to do. I'm, at the beginning, I wasn't sure exactly what we were being asked to do. But if it's to close schools, which is the only way we can repurpose schools, I don't think we're ready to make a decision that's going to affect that many people's lives. Done, thanks. Thank you for that, Jocelyn. Um, Ms. Martinez. So my concern is that our committee is, has been established to make a recommendation to the board. If we don't make a recommendation to the board, is plan B for them to make the decisions on their own? That's something I would probably not like to see without having them hear from the committee. That's my only concern, is that things are gonna move forward whether we're there as a committee making a decision or it's up to the board to do it. And so that's where my sense of urgency comes from. That's, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Ms. Endejas? I agree. I think that we have to dig more and like I said, if we have all the information in the facts at home in a binder, we can look at it in our free time, spare time. I know these are not enough meetings, but I think that we could at least get 10 schools that we have in mind. And I know that anything that we do will be irreversible, but there's nothing we can do at the same time. We are losing ADA. And I just heard certain schools are rezoning to sell their lands. And that's something I don't wanna see our district do at all. I would rather repurpose these uh, schools and save our schools, keep them, and we might need them later. We might, and we have uh, increase in enrollment. And so we still have those buildings. I would rather that than losing our buildings. And I know these are tough choices. We have to do them. That's why this committee was formed. Like I said before, it was a little too late. We're a couple years late for this committee. This should have been done years ago when they saw ADA scrolling, uh, spiraling down. 
Um, and it is unfortunate that we are having to be forced to make this decision because we shouldn't be put in this position. This should have been done years, three, four years ago, this committee, and we could have probably avoided even repurposing some schools by increasing the number of ADAs. But unfortunately, there is nothing we can do at this moment. And we might keep losing ADA. And we can't hold schools with 90, 80 students. That just would be impossible. So I don't know. I just, I, it's hard, but I think that if we all do our homework and we really put our heart into this and figure out a solution or figure out the least possible uh, school that can affect our students, regardless, it's gonna affect them and we can't avoid it at this point. And it won't be our fault entirely because this is just what happens in life. People stop having kids, people move, or people have a different choice of school or charters come in and take students. Um, so if we could all just like, get on the same page and really try to dig what would be the best choice. And nobody wants any school to be repurposed, but there is nothing we can do at this moment, sadly. Thank you for that, um, Natalie. And I'm gonna take Natalie's comment and then I'll open it up to the public for comments, just to make sure that we do provide some uh, opportunity for the public to comment. And if there's any additional comments from the group, then I'll bring it back to the group. Natalie. I wanted to um, piggyback off of what, which, what Jocelyn said. I, I agree. I feel like she hit every point. Um, I mean, even for my, for, for my, my, myself, I, I, I don't feel confident in making a decision. And I, I don't know if it's possible even to get the information to us sooner because I, I feel like we end up kind of wasting a little bit of time at the meetings when we don't have the information enough in advance. So we're looking through things or asking questions because you know there's some new numbers and different stuff. So if we have to utilize this time, I think we need the information, if possible, even earlier, or um, you know, certain things that appear at the meeting, it, you know, we're we're getting it in time. Um, and also, I mean, th this does need more time to make a big decision because, I mean, it it it, it is affecting no matter who. It's going to affect some like a, a community. It's going to impact them pretty heavily. And to try to have to make a rush decision, like there, there needs the, the impact, it, it, it could be the wrong decision, you know, or we might not have enough of the information or look at it uh, close enough. And I, I, I don't blame the administration because I feel like we finally have a functioning board. And for a long time, um, you know, I feel like as a, as a community, we've made really great gains together. And I feel like we were, um, you know, when you don't have a functioning board, a school district can't move forward and do things. So I don't think that, that has anything to do with um, the school district. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the, the current board because, you know, we were, we were fighting just to make some, some changes. So but I, 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 I don't feel we should be put in a position to kind of have to make a big decision like this in a couple months with an hour and a half every night and not have the information and time. To be honest, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to like come off a certain way, but I, I'm pretty frustrated. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Natalie, um, I will open it up to public comments. So those of you in the public, that would like to comment um, on the item, um, please raise your hand um, and we will call on you. I'll start with Ms. Dilsa Gonzalez. Hi, uh, I want to emphasize that today I'm here as the mother of two of the students in Anumbra School District. Um, I want to echo what Ms. Um, Jocelyn said. If this is a committee that is going to make sure that 
or to direct the district on a decision, a meeting once a month or two months is not enough. We're about to close this school year. We're gonna go to the next school year. And we're talking about really important um, matters that is gonna affect not only one, but many schools, and it's gonna affect hundreds of students. I have completely faith on the representatives that we have in here. I know that whatever decision or, what, or whatever direction they wanna direct that, as that district is, is gonna become from a place of knowledge, of love and care, but most importantly, thinking of the students and the parents. But reality is that decisions cannot be taken in when we only meeting once a month. We need more meetings. We need more acknowledgement and putting it out there. Take this as a town hall meeting with parents, with communities, and what those schools are gonna be getting affected because right now we're worried. But we're parents aren't gonna be able to understand when we talk truthfully and when we and when we let them know ahead of time. Um, thank you for your comments, Jocelyn. Thank you for your comments, Natalie. And thank you for and thank you for making a clarification that most of parents do not know. So um, that's it. Thank you for those comments. Um, I will add a little clarification. Um, this committee e is meeting weekly other than the board meeting weeks. Um, there is a tentative um, scheduled uh, community meeting that will be sent out this Friday for next week. Um, and we'll be sharing that information with you guys later on today. Ms. Erica Grant. Hi, um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, so I'm a teacher at Renaissance and it seems to me that there's a fair amount of confusion about the way that the Renaissance program runs. And I'd like to give a little bit of clarity for that. And just so folks understand why this program is so important to families and so important to community members. Um, we are a small school of choice, both sites, both Renaissance at Fisher and Renaissance at Matson. And that means a lot of things, but most of, most of it means that we're structured around school as community. So every single Renaissance student is known by every Renaissance staff member. We know the students by name in the current class, the current students that I work with. Um, I have taught both the, all three grade levels of sixth, seventh and eighth grade. I have taught every single one of the 300 students at Renaissance at Fisher. And I know them, I know their families. And that is the most powerful thing about the Renaissance model. And it's something that is effective, it works. And it also is powerful and a big draw to families, which is why our enrollment is high. And it's why our program model has been successful. So if you take both Renaissance schools and you just smash them together such that they're there is a larger school of 600 students um, or even more, it kind of obliterates that model. It takes away the very thing that makes Renaissance a draw for students and for families. So I really, I feel like this kind of listening to this conversation, I'm literally shaking because I feel like I have poured so much of my life into this school, into these students, into these families. And what I'm hearing is that a decision that affects the very like fiber of this model is being made by people who don't even know what it is. And that's, you know, I, I just really, I appreciate you guys giving us the chance to speak, but I really, I would like to echo the comments that have been made asking for more time and for more clarity. This is a decision that's gonna have reverberations for Alum Rock down the line and we've built something really beautiful here, something that should continue. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, Renee, can I ask Ms. Grant a quick question? Uh, Ms. Grant, which Renaissance campus do you teach at? We must have lost her. Never thank mind. You. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't being allowed to unmute. I teach at Renaissance at Fisher. Thank you. Thanks very much. For Renaissance, but they work the same way, right? So that is true for both right. sites. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any, I'm looking for people that have their hands raised um, under public comment. Not seeing any um, at this moment, I will bring it back to the committee for any final 
um, comments um, before we move on to the next item. Oh, I'm sorry. I think people took a little longer than expected. I see a uh, Maria Elena Reese, and then Teamster. Is that you, Tom? Maria Elena. Yes, Hi. it is me. Okay, let's start with Maria Elena, please. Hi, my name is Maria Elena Ruiz. I'm a teacher at Ocala Steam Academy, and I lived. Through, I've been at in Alam Rock for 15 years. This is my 16th year, and I lived through this when Pell was closing. And it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think I, my understanding here is, yes, we need to save money. And we talk about facilities and saving money based on our facilities, but we can't forget why we are here. We can't forget why year after year we come back, it's the students. And it really should be, the consideration should be the least amount of students that will be impacted. Students will be impacted. Families will be impacted. But let's look at what really matters, the number of kids that we're gonna to have to displace from the school. Like I said, I lived through this with Pella. I was at Ocala. We were at, at the point at the time was Ocala or Pella being closed. And I saw families crying, kids crying, and us adults crying uh, because it's not easy and it's the reality. And here to think that some schools are allowed to keep their models because that's how they started yet everyone else has to change at a time where things must change. Cri things are critical. So we can't just expect some people to say, your model is how it started. And I'm not going after Renaissance. It might sound after, that I'm going after the small schools or a school of choice like Adelante, but we have to understand the reality at which we are living. All schools have to be measured with the same criteria. And the truth is those of us who've been in education for 10, 15, 17 years, we know that a model that works with 300 students is a model that will work with 500 students. I still keep contact with kids, some of my students who are now college graduates. I have a student who started teaching for the first time this year, and it was in school at the time with 600 students, and we can still build those connections. I want everyone to just remember the importance. The most important factor here is our students. So let's, if we must display kids, let's display the least amount as possible, please. Thank you for your comments. Um, I will bring it back to the committee. Tom, uh, Teamsters, I think you're listed as. Uh, yes, Renee. Uh, I have just a general question. I know I've been, uh, you know, I've been involved with a couple of different uh, meetings with the district, but uh, you know, a question that I have is, you know, with this, um, with this pressure of being open, school being open sooner than expected initially. Um, you know, making this type of movement as far as closing school or, or giving our input to, you know, what school that we need to repurpose to, to save money and, and, and save budget wise. Um, how does that affect us? I mean, once, once we close school, we still have to provide facility for that overflow of, you know, the school that we're trying to close. Um, how's that, how, how we're going to, we can't, built any more facility to house overflow. I mean, we, we got to consider, you know, you know, you close one school, that's, that's, a, that's a big facility and you can combine it to other sites. Um, how is the state coming to support us on that? Or, or you know, how are we going to approach the, the state or the county? Hey, you know, I can't, we can't uh, close school at the same time, you know, um, try to house all these other, uh, you know, consolidate, you, you know what I mean? Just, just a thought. Thank you for your comments. Um, I believe I will take, I missed, I missed somebody from public comments and I will take one last one. Um, I believe Ms. Sandra Rivera was uh, raising her hand. Yes, thank you. Um, I was just going to comment as being an educator who has gone through this at a school closure and watching the students when Paula and Sloniker and Rogers were closed, 
it's very difficult for the teachers to live three and four years on, is my school going to be the next one closed? Is my school going to be the next one closed? Watching the schools get smaller and smaller is hard as well. And while we think about minimizing the least amount of students in the moves and everything else, I would hate to have this be a rushed, rash decision where we're going to close three schools, but we still know that that's not quite enough. So then on the back burner of everybody's minds is, are we going to have to do this committee all over again next year and recommend three to five more schools closed? So instead of maybe doing this in a super, what is an expedited feeling position now, have this be the start and really look at what it's going to take in order to keep us afloat with the least amount of movement and the least amount of school closures and come up with a number, whatever it may be. Not thinking three schools this year, three schools next year, and three schools the year after that, but making it so that maybe a decision isn't made and that we go to the, you go to the board and tell them, we need more time to really look into what is best for the district, what's best for the teachers, what's best for the students, and then come to that decision so that when school movement does happen, it can be something that's done well. So that way you have bigger groups of students moving into schools so that it's a get to know you kind of a situation that the staffs aren't constantly being changed and moved and redirected and that it's the le least amount of movement from everybody. That's just coming from a teacher who has been through this already. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, um, I have Brenda and that will be our last comment on this item and we'll have to move on to the next item. Brenda? I had a quick question. Is there a timeline that the board has given us like a date that we absolutely have to have this by? Is this a time sensitive? Um, I would say answers that we have to give to them. The board what has, is, yeah. yeah, go ahead. The board has given us a, a timeline and it is a recommendation for the um, art. You have the specifics, but I believe it's the May board meeting. Yes, uh, that, that's correct, Renee. The, the board has uh, given us a specific direction, as you said, uh, that points to the May 13th board meeting. They would like to make a recommendation uh, or be, be able to take your recommendations and uh, potentially take action on those recommendations at the May meeting. Uh, if you look at the calendar, that's why we've structured uh, against the idea of coming forward with our draft report at the April meeting so that we can bring that to the board as an information item. Uh, we're going to be lots of discussion, a lot of back and forth uh, with, with regards to um, uh, pros and cons, uh, and then uh, gives the board ch a chance then to digest all that and come back in May to make a final decision. And is there a state timeline for this? I know this is a board timeline, but is there a state timeline? Is the state giving us a timeline or the county? No. no? There's, no, there's, no there's no state timeline. Uh, the, the, there is, uh, and I'll turn this kind of over to Colvera because you know, he'll have a much better answer than I could. But um, uh, from a budgetary perspective, remember, uh, Colvera is building the budget for, the ne for next year and for the next three years right now. And so uh, it's important in that process that we get as much financial relief information to him uh, for inclusion uh, uh, as quickly as possible. And I think that's one of the drivers for the May 13th date. Am I correct? Okay. Yes, yeah, that is correct. We structured the calendar so that it helps us with budget development for the upcoming year. And remember, okay. um, school districts are required to adopt their budget um, before or July 1st. I mean, sorry, um, on or before July 1st of each year. Okay, so this is more for a budget structure draft, right, to present to this county, if I'm correct, right? Or, or would this, this have to be something this that impact, has to be this, imp or? this impacts that, right? That, this does yeah. impact that. That's not what's driving this, right? This is, okay. the board gave us a timeline um, it does impact 
when we submit our, our budget to the county. Yeah. Okay, so let's say we don't make a choice. Will this impact the budget not to pass, not having this? It, it could have some implications because um, okay. remember our, our budget's been in qualified status um, over the last three years or so. Um, the county is seeing this as the district's not taking enough actions to close that structural deficit, right? And yeah. so um, in their perception, we've been kicking this can, can down the road for a long time now. And we're up to the point where if you don't do anything immediately, um, that could have a really negative implications on um, our budget for next year um, as we move forward. Okay, uh, so this would be as a result of the district not adjusting their budget over the years. So this would be kind of like the third strike, right? If it doesn't happen. I wouldn't call it a third strike. It, 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 just, it, it just complicates and, okay. and puts a lot more doubt on the county uh, okay. whether the district can stay financially solvent going going forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I read that at the Figment report. I was going through that, and I did see a lot of red flags about the finances of the district, but wanted to know if this impacted that. But thank you so much for your answer. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jocelyn, one last comment. Well, I'm just curious after um, that uh, Colvera's response, was has the county actually i mean they haven't actually said you need to close schools in order to balance the budget correct they're just saying you need to balance the budget yeah i mean the counties it doesn't matter what what we do on a, yeah I mean, I mean the they just said you know we we have a structural deficit um our financial prospect doesn't look good um, they can provide some recommendation in terms of, you know, um, certain actions that a district can take, um, but they don't have the authority to come in and say you have to close schools. Have they ever suggested that we should have closed, that we should close schools? Um, I mean, those are the conversation that we've had with the county in terms of how we can make up, you know, the, the, the gap itself and, and correct the budget deficit. I mean, the fundamental problem issue here is that we have way too many schools oh. um, based on the number of students that we're serving. Trust me, um, I've been here when we had 16,000 with the same number of facilities. Right. So I get that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I guess I'm with Natalie as far as a bit of frustration in that this just really came up to us like six weeks ago. And so I guess it's the timeline that, you know, is the part that I'm questioning. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so moving on to the next item, um, I wanted to share with you and Patricia and or Jose, if you could bring up the flyer for the community forum. Um, the idea is, and it's more of an informational uh, forum, right? Uh, we are going to provide um, an overview in terms of the work, in terms of the things that we're, we're looking at, in terms of the things that we're considering, we're not sharing any sites or anything of that nature. It's uh, just a general overview of the work and the considerations. Uh, we will also uh, be um, taking comments from them. We're gonna create a document on the side for them to ask questions, they will have be able to verbally ask questions, and we will also create a document where they can input questions Sorry. or com it's and or comments. It's not doing it. Hang on. I see it, but it's not. It's not popping up. No, it's there, but it's bringing up the wrong one. So, give me a second. So sorry, I'm new to the sharing. No worries. Don't say that. <laughs> so, one more time. It keeps bringing up the wrong one. Okay. Can you send it to Mr. Chavez so that way he can bring it up? Yeah. Yes. Let me do that. Sorry. Okay. 
and um, just just the other item that we were going to discuss um, in terms of board updates. Um, I will work with Natalie just to share just the work. There's no recommendation, right? It's just an update on the work and what we've been engaged in. And um, I will work with Natalie in creating a, uh, a statement um, to share with the board at the board meeting if, if that's if that's allowed. Um, but at that at this time, um, we will not be making any kind of suggestions or recommendations in terms of um, schools. Can we get a forensic of each building of cost? Or is that too much to ask for? A forensic? Like, uh, we did an analysis, remember, we, we did an analysis of um, our buildings um, this past year, and that was a process. Colvera, maybe you could share what that was and, and how much that 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 was the cost of when we did the facilities analysis um just to give them an, an understanding of that and i mean we could share some of that information as well yes the facility assessment that we um did was back in i believe june of 2018 so we can sh i mean i think some of the data has been presented to this committee but we can also provide some additional information if needed right what was the cost for that and what was the time frame well, there's they. I mean, there's there's different components. There's short-term cost and long-term cost. No, I'm talking about the cost of, of actual the process, the pro to do the actual analysis. Oh, um, I'd have to go back. I think it was about close to a hundred thousand dollars that we did. And and it took how long? It was about a four to six month process. Yeah, but we can share all that yeah. information with, with yeah. the. Group. Right, it was a story process. They went school to schools and looked at, you know, practically everything. Yeah, and the, guys, the report is available online right now. And, and I like it because it also, not only does it have uh, pre-manufactured um, uh, charts and spreadsheets, you can also create uh, some custom reports too within the, the scheme of the, uh, the report. So um, yeah, it, it's out there for uh, everyone to take a look at uh, on the district's website. Yeah, we'll we'll put it we'll put it in our links on under the repurposing committee also so you guys have access to that. So we'll say Patricia, can you guys help us with that so they have easy access to that report? So this is the flyer that we intend to send out and I wanted to get your comments or feedback if there was something there that we needed to ask uh, or to expand upon or clarify. Um, the idea is to, you know, share the work of uh, the facilities uh, repurposing advisory committee um, and to share with them basically some of the information that you guys will be looking at, um, you know, sharing with them the, the enrollment pieces, sharing with them the idea or the concept or the need to uh, possibly repurpose facilities. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity for them to ask uh, some questions. And we will also create a document where they can add their questions and comments there for us to look at in the future. Jocelyn. I, I'm not sure, but I think that the part that says review projected school enrollment and other data to support sites recommended for action the second part of that, the other data to support sites recommended for action. Okay. I think that needs to be clarified. I'm not clear myself what that means. Um, review pro projected school enrollment and other data. Okay. I mean, what is- We'll, we, we'll reword it. it. It just has to do with all the information that we're providing you guys as you consider um, oh. all the sites, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll reword that. I have a, I have a question. Uh, I know that this is from March 10th. Is there 
any meetings that can cross with this one. I know that we have DLAC and I know that we have so many other and we even have people on this committee that sit on some that actually have to leave at 6.30 to go to these other committees. And I wanna make sure that when we have this, there isn't anything like there's always been where schools have their own meetings and then parents can't join this one because they're in between two meetings. So can we make sure that there is nothing scheduled on the agenda for this date that we have this for the schools that want to join or is it too late to do that? I, I couldn't guarantee you that. But what, we, what we will do is we will record this meeting and we will provide the document for people to add additional information. So in, within our, within our, our um, button there at the district website, we'll make that available to everyone so that they can review it at any time and they can also add questions and comments. Mr. Alberto. Yeah, just, just some uh, little technical details, I guess, here. Um, in the English version, it'd be nice to maybe make a comment that this meeting may be or will be uh, translated into the Spanish version. Uh, a little shout out there to uh, Carlos that's here with us today. Um, just to kind of make sure we mark it, you know, on all fronts to all groups. Um, and um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure we're already considering making a Spanish version flyer of this. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, obviously, just the, the, the note that, you know, this meeting will be translated for people to attend. Thank you. Mr. Turner. And when I read the, um, the title, Facility Repurposing Advisory Committee, um, I'm left without, I mean, we who have been involved in this know what that means, but I'm thinking that most of the public will read that and go like, what, what, what are they talking about? I think it doesn't communicate the seriousness of what's about to happen in the community uh, as well as it needs to to get people involved. Um, I think they need to understand in some way that this, we're talking about closing a few schools and moving some kids around. Um, do you have any suggestions specifically? I mean, I also don't, I also don't want, don't want to, to automatically jump to the conclusion that we're closing their school. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to scare the hell out of them, but <laughs> I want to get them to come. <laughs> Uh, um, if you have some suggestions, send them our way. We're, we're, not, we're probably not going to send this out. Patricia and I will work on it, and we won't send it out till, um, the, the, towards the end of the day tomorrow. So if you have some suggestions, I won't put you on the spot right now, or any of you guys, uh, please feel free to, um, to send it our way. And again, I, I definitely hear you. But at the same time, as you stated, right, we don't want to scare everybody that, you know, th their school is specifically being closed. So it, it, it can go both ways. Yeah. Can we add possibly potential school closing? I mean, it is, I don't know if that's scary, but it is the truth. We could add possibly potential school closure meeting or something like that. I think that will really catch everyone's eye and that is the truth okay well let, 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 let me let me work on that instead of projected school enrollment you might say declining school enrollment okay declining school enrollment yeah okay um mr tripodi yes Hey guys, if somebody's talking, I can't hear them. Brandy has her hand up. Yep. 
Thank you, Brandy. Hi. Um. So, uh, I've done many. I've hosted uh, many forums in my day uh, as I address residents from the point of a community manager, and I have found it to be most productive if we keep our flyers short versus, for example, it says facility repurposing advisory committee invites you. We can easily just say you are invited and keep the other items kind of short um, so that they're, because if we put too many uh, words out there, they might become confused or just look at it like, I don't know what this is and just disregard it almost like someone would spam mail. Um, I think we need to make it easy to read um, and just keep it to the point. And then once they're there, we can address, you know, what it's for. Um, it's just an idea. So it's just not like word vomit on paper. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm looking here. I don't see any great stands. Uh, we will take those into consideration and we will revise and we'll go from there. Um, as, I, as I did share with you, the only other items um, were board update and I will work with Natalie just to update her on the, the conversation and, and where it's going. Um, and again, I'm reassuring you that we're not mentioning any specific schools um, with this board update. And um, our next meeting, Ms. Mr. Art Han, if you could update us on next meeting. We're not meeting next week because we're going to have the community forum. Um, our next meeting is? Uh, would be the week after, which would be, hold on, grab my calendar here. Which uh, would be the 20, or excuse me. Um, the 18th. The 18th, yes, the 18th. Mr. Sanchez, we'll send you guys updates. Yes, go ahead. Can I make an announcement real fast? Um, just a heads up, you'll be getting an email from me um, regarding the facilities assessment report. Um, I do need to send you an email to provide you access to be able to run report itself. So um, expect an email from me. Um, and when you go into the um, online portal, then you can run any time reports from that, from that, um, from that uh, assessment. So... Thank you. Okay. okay. Anything else, guys? I, I Again, I want to thank you for your time. I know that everybody's extremely busy. Um, I know that we have a lot of on our, on our minds, and this is very important work. Um, I do appreciate it, and um, thank you for your understanding and, and, and knowing that, you know, we're, we're trying to do um, what's best for our kids, what's best for our district, and and we truly appreciate your help and support in this matter. And, you know, we will take your lead and, and, and guidance as we inform the board um, as to what, what you propose. Um, with that, um, I will ask Ms. Patricia, Mr. Han, Mr. Colvera to stand in for a minute just so we can wrap up next steps. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for all your help and support. And I, I hope that you have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Good evening. Good, Good evening. night. Bye.